Hello, and welcome back to Homegrown Theater Camp. I'm your director, Mackenzie, and today in rehearsal, we will make a sword fit for royalty and its accompanying stone, create our own wizard hats, and put all the technical elements together into our first dress rehearsal. But before all that, you need to warm up. So you go warm up, and I'm gonna run around my house a few times, and I'll see you when I get back. So now that we're back, <laughs> now that we're back, let's talk technical elements. So the first technical element that we're going to talk about is props. We've included a list of props in the script. Most of these are things that you can find around your home, but if you can't, you have a couple options. The first is to make a version of these props using whatever you have lying around and your creativity. Another option is to find something else to use as a standing for that prop. As long as you commit to the idea that this prop is the real thing as your character, the audience will believe it. So a wooden spoon works perfectly well as a magic wand as long as you commit to it as the character. The next technical element that we'll be talking about is sets. Now we've intentionally left the sets pretty simple in The Sword and the Stone, but if you want to add some extra detail, all you have to do is look at the descriptions of the settings at the beginning of each scene. So for example, for the forest setting, you could add some extra leaves or twigs around just to make it more believable and full for the audience. Or for Merlin's cottage, you could leave some books lying around the stage. These are just optional touches, however. But there is one prop set piece combination that is not optional in the Sword and the Stone. And that's the titular sword and the stone. To learn how to make this, we're going to go to our resident set designer, Chandler Boyd. Hi, I'm Chandler. The first thing we're gonna make is the sword. Now, what we've got here is we've got our cardboard pieces that we've cut into our sword shape. We have our blade pieces. Any cardboard was gonna work. Anything that you can find in your house, it can be as thick or thin as you want. If it's thinner, like mine is, you might wanna do two of each piece so that you can layer it well. It doesn't have to be heavy. All it has to do is work. So. We've got blade pieces, hilt pieces, and the rest of our hilt. The first thing we're going to do is assemble our hilt and put it inside of our blade pieces. Now we're going to want to tape that together. Make sure everything is lined up well. It doesn't have to look pretty because we're going to go over it with foil, but it does have to be in line. So we'll do that. Flip it over. One of our pieces is falling out, but that's okay. Again, it doesn't have to look that pretty right now. There we are. Once you have those pieces put together, and it might be helpful to tape the blades together so they don't keep moving around on you, you're gonna do the hilt on either side. You're gonna go for some tape here. The other side of the hilt, again, make sure it's all lined up. And once it is all together, you have the beginnings of your sword. So we've reinforced our sword a little bit more with duct tape. You want to duct tape or whatever tape you have in the house all over the hilt. The reason why we do this is because we can color it in later if you want to embellish or design it. Now. For the aluminum foil. You want to cut off quite a big amount of foil. Measure first always. Make sure you have enough for the length of your blade. Now 
you want to fold it carefully. Make sure it's pressed down all nice and neat. Fold it again. Make sure that the aluminum foil is tight around the edges. You can start to see the outline of the sword in the aluminum foil. You can cut the tip out. And you'll have this flap on the back, but we can use our tape and close it up after we're done. Now that we have the sword, we need the stone. As you can see here, we have a pretty workable sword and stone with the sword pretty in place. Now, let's look underneath the hood. We've got the sword. We can set that aside for now. Underneath this blanket, we simply have stacked pillows on top of an ottoman. If you don't have an ottoman, you can use other options, such as a laundry basket or a coffee table, anything that would just help it elevate. The pillows can be quickly taken on and off your stage. And behind the pillows, I've been using weights. What the weights do is they hold up and support the sword with the assistance of the pillows in front of it. The weights can be easily replaced with stacks of books, and you can even better suit it for the width of your sword so that it holds upright. It can be quickly taken on and off stage, and I will display that. All you need to do is place your pillows. I layer them a little bit, each one a little farther back than the last. Quickly cast your blanket, don't show any tags, or your audience might know that you're using a blanket. Set up your weights or your books behind, and place your sword. And there you have the sword and the stone. The next technical elements that we'll be talking about are sound and lights. We've left these wide open and very flexible, and extensive sounding lights are not necessary for your performance. But, in case you'd like to add a few details, here's some options. For sound, if you sing, play an instrument, or have a speaker, you can include music before the performance or between the scenes. But if you include music between the scenes, try to keep it short so that we can keep the scene transitions moving along quickly. Also, try to find classical music or adventure music that makes you think of the play and fits the tone. For lights, make sure you're performing in a well-lit location, either inside or outside when it's bright out. You want to do this so that people can see your faces and see what's happening on stage. If you want to add a detail and you're performing inside, you can start the play in Merlin's monologue and have him begin with just a flashlight on his face, and then later in the monologue, turn all the lights on so we can see the entire stage. Now onto costumes. You can either make these as detailed or as simple as you would like, depending on what's in your home and how much time you'd like to spend on them. You should start all your costumes with the base of all black or plain clothing, and then add a few accent pieces on top of this, like hats or robes to differentiate between a few characters. Using a few bold accent pieces to show who is playing which character is especially helpful when you have to play multiple characters in the same play. So this is very important for the one and the two person versions of the sword and the stone. For an example of an accent piece, Merlin could have a wizard's hat. To learn how to make a wizard's hat, let's talk to an actual wizard. Every wizard needs a wizard hat. Today, we're gonna to be showing you how to make your own wizard hat. What you're gonna need for this is construction paper, you're going to need probably more than one sheet, a ruler, scissors, a glue stick, tape and or a stapler, a compass, it's okay if you had to improvise a little bit, and materials for decoration. You're going to want to grab your construction paper. Uh, the bigger the construction paper, the better, because the bigger the construction paper, the bigger your hat's going to be. I don't have that big of construction paper. Mine is 12 by 18, uh, so it's going to be about a medium-sized hat. All right, so you're gonna, because this is 18, my half circle for the cone is going to be nine. 
So you're going to want to take your compass <clears throat> and you're going to find nine or whichever is the half point for your paper. You are going to mark it and then you are going to make a big half circle for your paper and that will be your code. All right, so once you have your half circle drawn, you're gonna to wanna to cut it out. So now that you have your half circle cut out, you can make your cone. The point that you drew with your compass is going to be the actual point of the cone. It is going to look something like this. What you're gonna to wanna to do is fit it to your head as best you can. So for me, be about right here. You're gonna to wanna to hold that place and staple it. So now you have your placeholder for how big your, your head is. All right, so now you're going to glue the seam with your handy glue stick. All right, this one's kind of tricky. Uh, you're gonna try and move the staple just a little bit out of the way. And as best you can, apply glue to the, ins to the seams of the hat. Apply glue liberally because glue sticks don't always like to work that well. All right, so the inside and the outside. And then when you're done gluing, you are going to want to hold the seams together until the glue is dry. All right, kind of like this. It helps if you are able to hold it like that. Kind of put your hand in it and press down until the glue is dry. All right, so now you're gonna wanna cut the fringes for the brim. You're gonna fold these out and that's what you're gonna glue to the circle that we're gonna cut out later. The way you want to cut the fringes is about an inch apart and about a half inch up. And you're gonna wanna do that all the way around the hat. Now that you finally got the fringes cut all the way around the base of the hat, you're gonna wanna fold them outwards. Oh. As such, now that you've cut out all the fringes and folded them out, you're going to want to measure the inside diameter of the hat. You don't want to measure the fringes. My diameter is about 7.5. You're going to want to remember that number. You're going to want to find the midpoint of your second piece of construction paper, and you are going to want to put your compass in the middle point and then find the radius of the diameter that you got, and then you're going to draw a big old circle and that is going to be the hole for your head because you're making a brim you're gonna want to widen the brim as much as you can I can't do it too much on this piece of paper but you're gonna want to draw another outside circle and that is going to be the brim of your hat now what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to cut out the middle circle and all of this extra stuff Once you finally cut out your circle, it should look a little bit like this. This is your brim. Now you're going to want to test and make sure that it fits on your hat. Uh, if it doesn't, then you can adjust accordingly. This seems to be fitting pretty well, so the next step is to glue it. The way you're going to do that is you have the fringes here. The fringes are going to be what's holding the brim on, so you're going to take your brim and on the inside part of the brim, you're gonna to want to put a lot of glue. This is what is gonna to stick to the fringes and keep the brim on your hat. Once you are done liberally applying glue, you are going to slide that over your hat and as best you can, press and hold it down to secure the brim in place. And now you have your hat once the glue is set and uh, now you can decorate it if you forgot to decorate it at the before cone stage like I did. Not to fear because this part is still flat. And you can draw little moons and stars as best you can. Decorate it however you want. You are your own wizard. And now 
you have a wizard hat, medium sized. Thank you, Mr. Wizard. Until we meet again. The last technical element is makeup. You don't need to do anything with it, but it's the last technical element, so I thought I'd tell you about it. You can take what we've gone over today and go even further. If you have fabric or costumes or toys or props at home that you think fit with the play, feel free to add them in and make your performance your own. But what's most important is the performance itself, not any tech or design that you add later. There's a reason that we spend three days on performance and only one on tech. It's because everyone has the power to perform to the best of their ability in their own home. And I, for one, am very excited to see your performances. So now take the tech that we've talked about, add in whatever you like, and run the show in order with all of those things combined. That will be your first dress rehearsal. Once you've done that, do that two, three, four, or as many more times as you feel like. And then once you feel ready, invite your family to come watch and put on your show. You and your family can share your performance with us on social media by tagging us and using the hashtag homegrown theater camp. And then at the end of the weekend, we'll watch all your performances and give feedback and encouragement as well as feature a few of them in our curtain call video next week. We spent this week analyzing the script, finding the voice and physicality of our characters and adding tech into our very own performances. Now you have all the tools that you need to put on a great performance this weekend. Good work this week. You've got this, and break a leg. Thank you for watching Homegrown Theater Camp. You can subscribe to join the cast and download the script from our website. Follow us on Instagram and let us know if you have any questions during your rehearsal. Homegrown Theater Camp is produced by Blixed Locally Grown with support of the Nebraska Arts Council, the Nebraska Cultural Endowment, the Pearl Francis Finneding Foundation, Union Bank and Trust, and generous individual donors.